Woodbridge! Woo! Yeah! Feels good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Mr. Chow. I teach science at Beckman High School, and it really is an honor to be here tonight. As we just covered, tonight's theme is diversity. And uh, my hope is that you don't just sit there and you enjoy what's about to be told to you from all these speakers, but my, uh, but my hope is that you leave here more knowledgeable and inspired. Can we say inspired? inspired. That's right. That's my people. Inspired to make a positive difference in this world. Um, so would you say Orange County is becoming more diverse, yes or no? Yeah. I, I would too. If you take a look at it, right, everything from our cultures to our languages to our foods we have available here to our socioeconomic backgrounds to even our political beliefs, right? We are becoming more and more diverse. And it would be really hard for us to even uh, become more homogeneous or, or, or anything like that. But if you look at Orange County or even Irvine, we're becoming more and more diverse. So we need to address this. I'm so glad that we are here tonight to talk about diversity. So the question for us and, the, and what I want you to take away from my presentation is, how are we going to respond to this increasing diversity that's happening around us? So uh, there's two things that can really happen. One, conflict. And can we, uh, can we all say boo? boo? No, we don't want that. Right? Conflict will happen. Why? We have different opinions. We have different beliefs. We have different ways of doing things. And when you think of your, um, as your way as the best way of doing things, then there can lead to a lot of misunderstandings. The second thing, another thing that can happen um, when people are different is that we learn to understand each other. Can we all say, ah, yeah. Ah, ah yeah. yeah. That's my people. We work together and we celebrate each other's differences. And um, hopefully we can reach that tonight. So as you can see there, as seen on my slide, no, no to conflict and yes to understanding one another. But it's not going to be that easy. Uh, we all have our own biases and prejudices. I want you to think for yourselves for a moment. I'm going to say a couple words, and I want you to think about, or just really think about the first things that come to your mind when these uh, words pop up. Okay? First one. Irvine. Bubble. Now you have to say it. <laughs> Bubble. <laughs> Bubble. Irvine. Santa Ana. Zoo. African Americans, Asians, right? So as we can see, based off of your responses, yeah, your, your initial thought, that's your bias, right? So I'm not going to stand here and say that you've, you've got some biases. No, I do too as well. So I think that's the first thing we need to figure out or like to um, understand, that we all have different biases, okay? And it's important to know that even though we start off with biases. That's not where we end. Is that where we end? No. no. So let's talk about it. So instead of just denying that we have biases, no. The first thing we have to do is we have to admit it. Can we all say admit it? Admit. That's right, my people. I love Woodbridge. I really do. Um, growing up, I moved a lot. I was born in Washington State, in Seattle. Moved over to Idaho. I lived in Montana for a bit. And then I moved down here to SoCal um, as I grew up. I moved around every single year. And um, in third grade, I was the only Asian kid in my entire school. Uh, we were on the border of uh, Washington State and Idaho uh, in a little town called o Otis Orchards. And um, actually, you know what? There was another Asian kid in my school. It was my brother. <laughs> Got you. So it was really... It was really difficult growing up in this environment in which I was the only kind of my own. And um, what it made it even worse is my mom would dress my brother up in matching outfits, right? <laughs> this is a serious thing. And my brother would have the number um, 22, and I would be the number 23. And I kid you not, on the first day of class, when I uh, came in, uh, the person next to me looked at me and said, are you an alien? <laughs> Seriously. And I was like, uh, no, I'm Chinese. Another kid asked me that same day, do you know who Jackie Chan is? I'm like, yes, that's my uncle. <laughs> so I created this rumor at this school, but it was really difficult growing up. And things didn't really change when I moved down here to Tustin, California. I have a story of this kid named Brandon who went to my school, very smart kid, kind of nerdy, right? Uh, didn't have many friends during lunch. He would sit alone, 
and um, he would always eat the same food every day. Steak fried rice. And if you're sitting there and you're like, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to show you a picture right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And some steak fried rice. Um, coming down here, I was trying to fit in. Um, at, at the time I moved down here in the, in the late 90s, there weren't that many Asians, right, in, in the Tustin area. I think in our whole class of fifth grade, um, I think there was about six of us. And um, so I would make all different kinds of friends. And I remember this specific time during lunch in which I'd walk out, um, and I was with the cool kids. And um, they were like, ew, that stinks. Steak fried rice, ew, Chinese food. And I just walk with them, and like, they just laugh. And um, as I was with them, you know, like one of the lead kids who I respected a lot, he was like, what do you think, Philip? Isn't that gross? And like all eyes looked on me. And, I, and me and Brandon, we just locked eyes. And I was like, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> And then Brandon started crying, and then he ran away. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel right now. But at the time, I did not know um, what I was supposed to do. I was so scared of being judged or even being bullied by these kids. So ham sandwich. So I go home that night, and I go, Mom, never make me fried rice. And she's like, but fried rice is your favorite food. (laughs) I was like, no, Mom. From here on out, you, you make me some ham sandwiches. You've never asked me to make a ham sandwich for the rest of the year, everybody. I ate ham sandwiches. Um, If I could go back to that moment, right? And we all have been through moments like this, whether or not you're on the cool kid side or you're on the Brandon side. But if I could go back to that moment, I would do two things. One, I wish I was proud of who I was and where I came from. Can we clap for that? Come on. Be proud. And two, I wish that I would have been an advocate for those who are different, right? Because I was in a position of power. I was with the cool kids. And if I just said, hey, guys, leave Brandon alone. Come on. You know, like, that actually looks pretty good, right? You should try some sometimes. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad, right? So can we change the past? No. Louder. No. No. But can we change the future? Yes. So my hope, my hope, everybody, and and I'll leave you off of this, is that when you're in that next Uh, experience in which you see a Brandon or you are a Brandon or you see that happening, I just hope you make the right decision. Because if I I could go back in life, I'd change a lot um, about what I'd say and who I'd stand up for. With that being said, let's put our hands together! Woo! Yeah! Woodbridge! 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 Woodbridge!